everybody. I'm so happy to be here taking part in Earth Day with all of you. Uh, I nearly didn't make it because less than a week ago, the volcano in Iceland grounded most of Europe and seemed a powerful reminder of the precarious nature of our life here on Earth. And already it's almost forgotten as we settle back into our comfort zone. But nothing is more dangerous than getting too comfortable. 21 years ago, my husband Sting and I met a man called Rowney, a Kayapo tribesman from the Amazon rainforest whose land was being destroyed. We witnessed trees thousands of years old being burned to the ground on an incredible scale. Rowney had lived his entire life deep in the Amazon, understood clearly the consequences of burning down the forests that would impact far beyond his own family, his own land, and his own country. He gave this as a dire warning. There's a lot of smoke, he said. My people are very sick. But whatever happens in my forest today will affect all of you in your lands tomorrow. Well, the world didn't heed his words. We were far too comfortable. The danger was too far away, too far into the future. Easier to be cynical, dis dismiss the scaremongering, dismiss the do-gooders who thought they could make a difference. 21 years on, despite all the evidence that's been amassed on climate change, the world is still intent on ignoring Rowney's inconvenient and uncomfortable truth. Last year, as the Copenhagen summit approached for a few short weeks, some of us dared to hope the leaders of the world would dare to seize the day and agree to drastic cuts in carbon emissions by the biggest polluting nations. But no, the leaders of the world all failed us. The naysayers in the press undermined the science, debunked the theories, and many of us were only too happy to be told that there was no need to panic after all. Maybe everything would be all right because the truth is too uncomfortable to stomach. In the face of imp impending global catastrophe, human nature turns the vast majority of us into incurable optimists. We ignore the facts. We bury our heads into the sand. We're blind to everything except what we want to believe. Well, I know you've heard it all before, but I'm going to tell you some of these facts again. Rainforests, my friends, once covered 14% of the land's Earth's surface, and now they only cover 6%. Global temperatures could rise by 6 degrees by the end of this century. In that future world, we'll face such extreme weather conditions that our planet will no longer support human life. When the rainforests have been decimated to the tipping point, there'll be no turning back. Do we want to be the generation that destroyed ourselves? What? No! What will it take us for, to stop hiding from the truth? Well, at the risk of being an incurable optimist myself, I do believe that there's a way out of this mess. Deforestation accounts for around 20% of the world's carbon emissions. Simply halting deforestation would be the single fastest, cheapest way to make a, a significant reduction. Wouldn't that be a great start? <laughs> Nothing could be more straightforward if there is the political will. Why aren't we doing it? Because Land is exploited, human rights are abused, precious resources are plundered because we've allowed mahogany sideboards, cheap burgers to hold more intrinsic value than human life. It seems that our beautiful forests are worth nothing till they've been turned into toilet paper. Land is worth nothing until it's producing something that can be sold on the world markets. We've allowed the dollar, the pound, the petrol in our tanks to rule the world. We've got to find a way out of this mess. But first, we have to face the truth and we have to embrace change. We have to move well out of our comfort zone. We can't leave it to the next governments, the next generation. 
It's time to take the responsibility, not by 2020, not by 2050, but now cut carbon emissions decisively and urgently. Let's fight for our planet. Let's fight now. I'd like you all to know that one billion people around the world have been celebrating and working on Earth Day. You're part of them, you're part of the world, you're part of what the, the solution is to climate change and all of the things that Trudy talked about. Thank you so much for being here. So can we do it? One, two, three. Okay, let's, okay, let's, let's give it up, up for Sting! Sting.